Sheboygan, Wisconsin, eighth ranking in the state by population, 45,000, fifth in the number of manufacturing employees, and sixth in family income among the top 10 cities in the state. Those are the cold statistics of this city built on the shores of Lake Michigan, 57 miles north of Milwaukee, and 130 miles north of Chicago. The figures cannot show, however, that Sheboygan is also the city of elms, of broad, clean streets, a city noted for one of the finest street systems in any city of the nation. 108 miles of city streets paved and improved. Neither do the statistics tell you that 80% of the city's homes are owner-occupied. Worker and shopper transportation is ably provided by the Sheboygan City Lines, serving not only Sheboygan, but Kohler and Sheboygan Falls as well. Another phrase that sums up the attractiveness of this city is, a good place to live, a good place to work, a good place to visit. It is also known as the city of churches, of good schools, of diversified industry, year-round recreational facilities, and smart retail shops. The solid prosperity of the city is due partly to the ancestry of its citizens, primarily of German stock, who settled in Sheboygan after the revolutions of 1849, men and women of skill and training in basic manufacture and industry, artisans and craftsmen, as well as farmers whose labor cleared the land and raised phenomenal crops of oats, potatoes, and wheat. The solidity of Sheboygan today is typified by the architecture of its public buildings, such as the Municipal Auditorium, the Post Office, its City Hall, the Federal Building, and its public library system with two branches, six stations, and a film and record library to supplement the book collection. As a matter of pride with Sheboyganites is the Municipal Park System, 14 individual parks comprising some 300 acres. Administratively, Sheboygan operates under a mayor aldermanic form of government. Representation is provided by two aldermen elected from each of the city's eight wards. A vigorous association of commerce, which includes the outstanding civic and industrial leaders of the community, constantly appraises the city's progress and tells the story of Sheboygan to potential industry, pointing out the advantages the city can offer to a new plant or factory or they can suggest improvements to existing plants and facilities in the community. A streamlined Department of Public Works is kept busy coordinating the growth of the city by planning and executing the construction and maintenance of street and sewer facilities. Other functions include the maintenance and repair of municipally owned buildings, enforcing compliance with building zoning, and other ordinances. Much of Zeboygan's prominence in its city system is due to the vision and planning of these men in the Department of Public Works. Since Sheboygan's founding over a century ago, it has been known as a law-abiding city to the credit of Sheboygan's present-day citizens and their ancestors. Today, the city's per capita crime ratio is among the lowest in Wisconsin. Even so, the city maintains a fully manned and equipped police department, for a policeman in a modern city must be more than just a deterrent to crime and criminals. But he is constantly trained in the latest developments of police communications, investigative procedures, and law enforcement problems. But in Sheboygan, traffic control has become the number one police problem, as it has in most progressive cities. Two-way radio-equipped squad cars and motorcycles do much to make the policeman's job easier and to increase his efficiency. But a Sheboygan officer still knows how to use his service revolver just in case. It would be nice if we could say there are never any police emergencies in Sheboygan, or there is never any need to turn in a fire alarm. But there are those occasions too. Although, if we may point again to statistics, like the crime rate, Sheboygan's per capita loss through fire is also among the lowest in the state.
The city has had a paid fire department since 1888, when funds were appropriated to pay the previously volunteer members of Hose Company No. 1, then located in the 800 block on North 8th Street. Today, the fire department can point pridefully to three engine companies, an aerial truck company, and a service ladder truck company, a complete communication system, a fire prevention department, a superintendent of machinery, and a force of almost 70 men. The community is proud of the record of its fire department over the years, not only in fighting fires, but helping prevent them, with resultingly low insurance rates in Sheboygan. Electric power for Sheboygan, as well as a large part of central and southern Wisconsin, is provided by the Wisconsin Power and Light Company. The largest generating plant of the company system is located in Sheboygan, at the Edgewater Station. Thus, ample electric power is assured in Sheboygan for both existing and potential industries who require adequate power at reasonable cost. Geography endowed Sheboygan with rich rolling farmlands to the north, the west, and on the south. And to the east, the vast blue waters of Lake Michigan, known to all cities on its shores as the inexhaustible water supply. When filtered and purified at the water department, an average of almost 8 million gallons daily are pumped to Sheboygan users. But water to Sheboygan means more than drinking water. It means a highway of commerce over which travel the lake steamers of the Great Lakes as well as foreign ships from faraway ports. Lake and rail traffic supplement each other with the city served by the main line of the Chicago and Northwestern Railway. Connections are made with car ferries either in Milwaukee or Manitowoc so that Sheboygan commerce can be moving in trains on the eastern shore of the lake after an overnight voyage, thus expediting rail shipments to the east. Ten major motor common carriers serve the Sheboygan district, shipping out the products of the city interstate, and passenger bus lines make connections with Chicago, Milwaukee, and Green Bay. The happy circumstance of Sheboygan's geography has developed into an enviable balance of industry and agriculture. From the rolling meadows of the dairy farms can be seen the chimneys and cranes of Sheboygan's industry. Diversified industry that comprises such enterprises as metal fabrication, woodworking, leather and leather products, plastics, textiles, food products, paper products. Typical are these diversifications in manufacture, such as the fabrication of cardboard folding boxes. Nationally known brands of shoes are made in Sheboygan by three old line companies. And the processing and canning of foods has long been a stable industry in Sheboygan, the natural outgrowth of the richness of Wisconsin's countryside in agriculture and dairying. The farms of Sheboygan County are renowned for the quality of their milk and cheese, another legacy from the German and Dutch roots of Sheboygan's beginnings. In fact, the county is known as the cheese capital of the world, with many varieties of cheeses manufactured in the nation, as well as to foreign lands. We have been seeing and examining Sheboygan as a community of industry, of natural and man-made facilities, and how it operates. We have seen its achievements and aims in the fields of commerce and civic development. Now what about the people of Sheboygan, the average man, woman, and child, without whom these attainments would be meaningless? For people are the soul of any community, and the home is their cathedral. And fundamentally, a man works and is productive because of that home he wishes to provide for his family. Whether it be Sheboygan, Wisconsin, or Sherberg, France, this is basic. These are the homes that the people of Sheboygan build for themselves. And as we told you earlier, 80% of the city's homes are occupied by their owners. There is one thing in which Sheboygan is unique. 
Few, if any other cities in the world of comparable size, can make the claim there are no slums in Sheboygan. On these broad and wide streets, even the humblest of homes has its bright coat of paint, its trim lawn, and patch of flowers. Traditionally, Sheboygan has been known as the garden spot of Wisconsin. The city beautiful, the city of tidy homes, and in this case, the city of elegant homes, which link the town with the gracious living of the not too distant past. Now there is a new elegance in the modern approach to fine homes. A good place in which to live. We cannot think of a phrase more apt to describe these scenes that are typically Sheboygan. Ideally, American. Perhaps it is this atmosphere of home and neighborhood which contributes to a negligible juvenile delinquency problem in Sheboygan, and in turn is reflected in the low crime per capita ratio of which the city is justifiably proud. Backing up that wholesomeness in home life is Sheboygan's public and parochial school system, another model for other cities to copy. North High School represents the finest in the city's public education. There are 12 public elementary schools in Sheboygan, including one which is especially designed for serving the mentally handicapped. In addition to Central School, the James Madison and James Fenimore Cooper schools were commissioned recently. Ultra modern and the best evidence of these efforts to provide educational facilities for an expanding population. There are also 12 parochial schools on the elementary level in the community. The city offers a vocational and adult education program, plus a complete athletic and recreational program for all students. As Sheboygan leads in education, street construction, model fire and police departments, so does it excel in guarding and preserving the public health. In the Sheboygan Public Health Department, laboratory, bacteriological tests are made on the local milk supply. The city's children are protected by inoculation such as the salt vaccine for polio. But in the public health field, Sheboygan is among the nation's leaders in pioneering water fluoridation practice as a protection against tooth decay. Since fluorine was added to the city's water supply in 1946, dentists report gratifying reductions in the caries rate among children. Sheboygan is health conscious, as evidenced by numerous modern medical centers as well as clinics for the diagnosis and treatment of various diseases and illnesses. Sheboygan not only deals with disease when it strikes, but strives to prevent its occurrence by encouraging routine physical examinations. Outstanding in the city for its fine facilities is Memorial Hospital, organized in 1933. Typical of its service to the community, is the figure of 6,299, the number of patients treated during the year 1956. Memorial's community embraces some 20-odd other Wisconsin cities and towns in addition to Sheboygan. A modern laboratory with the latest equipment serves the doctor in diagnosing a patient's illness. Operating rooms and therapy facilities rival those of any big city hospital or clinic. A part of therapy is, of course, pleasant surroundings particularly for children. Design motifs in the children's rooms and wards make convalescence for Mary or Johnny a pleasant adventure instead of a time of dull, dreary, unhappy boredom. In the modern obstetrics department of Memorial, life begins. In 1956, for instance, 833 babies were born and helped to a good start in life while their mothers received the best of care. Active in the recreational, as well as the spiritual pursuits of the city, is the YMCA, which just recently dedicated its new building, which includes a 60 by 25 foot swimming pool. 
Here, the youngsters of Sheboygan also learn of loyalty to flag and country and the meaning of patriotism. For many of them, the Pledge of Allegiance is first learned at YMCA ceremonies, such as this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And basic to all activities of the YMCA is the Christian faith and the worship of God. 1939 saw the organization of the YMCA in Sheboygan. It came about when some 500 high school boys and girls presented a signed petition to the editor of the Sheboygan Press. In their petition, the youngsters pointed out the need for some kind of facilities for activities such as the YMCA. This led to the joint effort by business and professional men in Sheboygan to organize a YMCA, which set up shop first in Mead Hall, connected to the first congregational church. It soon became apparent, however, that larger facilities would be required with the expanding teenage program, as well as other activities for men and boys. In the next few years, property was acquired on the lakefront on Broughton Drive and some $700,000 was raised through public solicitation. Construction of the new building was begun in 1953, and its dedication accomplished in 1955. And today, Sheboygan boasts one of the finest YMCA facilities in the nation. Thus, adding to the influences of the family, the school, and the church is the YMCA of Sheboygan bonding the youth of the city in the friendship circle, forging tomorrow's citizens. Yet no community's program for its youth can be complete unless it remembers those whom others have forgotten or have been unable to provide them with recreational attention and care for their well-being. The Sheboygan Camp for underprivileged children each year sees to it that the city's less fortunate children have the opportunity to attend a camp to learn and do the out-of-doors activities which most children can enjoy. The word gemutlichite is often a misused term when describing the good life of a people or community. But it is the right word to use in Sheboygan. Again, the German antecedents come to the fore in this city, for today's citizens, as did their forefathers, seek recreation and play just as diligently as they do their daily work. And in Sheboygan, the symbol of Gemutlichkeit is bratwurst and beer. In the summertime, the evening air is filled with the aromatic smoke of thousands of backyard grills. As this favorite sausage is fried over charcoal, beer, and bratwurst in the backyard or in the city's parks, the badge of good living as the city plays. On Sundays and holidays, for instance, there are many activities to help digest the bratwurst, as well as sharpen the appetite for more, such as a day at the zoo in Ballrath Park or any of the 13 other city parks, comprising some 300 acres. The largest of these parks for the recreation of Sheboygan is Evergreen, sometimes called Pine Woods. It covers some 135 acres of spacious and individualized picnic areas in the midst of some of the oldest pine trees in the area. On the city's northeast side is Ballrath Park, comprising some 16 acres of the finest landscaping in any park of comparable size. Kiwanis and the land parks are also showplaces of the park system. And the universal sport of any Wisconsin man, woman, or child is fishing. And in Sheboygan, he can use the fly rod right in the city's park. The Sheboygan River has long served the city, both as a harbor as well as providing natural industrial sites for the early manufacturing plants. In recent years, it had contributed its share to the city's recreation. On the river's graceful horseshoe sweep through the heart of the city, the outboard enthusiasts try out their craft in the summer months. 
Sheboygan's natural endowment of sheltered water has done much to encourage the growth and development of this sport. Kiwanis Park, lining the river on the west side, is the base for the boatmen. As launching platforms have been constructed to facilitate this sport, On weekends, the roar and sputter of the Atwaters, the Mercuries, the Evan Roods, and Johnstons attest the wide popularity of motorboating. The outboards, of course, are Johnny Come Lately's of the boating fraternity. At the Sheboygan Yacht Club, one will find the larger craft of the inboard yachts for lake cruising, as well as sailboats of all classes and varieties. In July of each year, these boats must endure the whine of the outboards when the Sheboygan Outboard Motor Club plays host to more than 100 entrants from Wisconsin and Illinois for a day of outboard racing in the harbor. But the sailboats have been in Sheboygan Harbor for over a century. Although a hundred years ago, they were the graceful lakers that shipped timber and furs to other ports of call along the Great Lakes. These are their descendants, dedicated to sport and pleasure. Like most lake cities, the area's recreational activities in the summer months are centered about the cool blue waters of Lake Michigan. The land park sprawls along 44 acres of the lake on the north side, providing ample bathing beaches and other facilities. These include baseball diamonds, illuminated tennis courts, and a huge parking area for waterfront events. One of the biggest such attractions at Deland is the annual 4th of July celebration when the fireworks displays reflect their fiery grandeur in the night black of the lake waters. Other bathing facilities are provided at other parts of the city, including General King Park on the south side, as well as auxiliary beaches at Clifton on the north side and High Avenue on the south side. If it is true that park time is treasure time in fun, health, and happiness, then the citizens of Sheboygan are indeed endowed with ample measure. Many Sheboyganites remember the old swimming hole of their boyhood days many years ago at the quarry. Well, the old swimming hole is still there, although some would hardly recognize it today, since it is now included in Evergreen Park and is maintained and supervised by the city's park system. The quarry beach opens on June 15 of each year and closes after Labor Day. The lake beaches are open on the 1st of July and are closed on August 31st. There are numerous smaller park areas studied throughout all sections of the city, each equipped with various facilities depending on the size of the park area. The park system provides 34 separate services for the recreation and well-being of Sheboygan citizens. Road America at the nearby village of Elkhart Lake has become internationally famous as the scene of the championship national road races. Sports cars and drivers from all over the world sent here at Road America, including entrants from Sheboygan, to compete in these races, sponsored by the Sports Car Club of America. These speedy autos zoom over a four-mile gem-like path of asphalt that cuts through birch and willow belts in the beautiful Kettle Moraine landscape. Over a million dollars worth of such foreign beauties as Ferraris, Maseratis, Mercedes, Jaguars, Porsches, and Alfa Romeos come to Elkhart Lake for this big event. And then there is the game of golf, more typically American today than it ever was Scottish on the moors of St. Andrews. And Sheboygan's golfers are no less avid about it than are the devotees at Chicago's Tam O'Shanter. This is the course and other facilities at Sheboygan's Pine Hills Country Club. His fairways and greens rival those of any other course in the state of Wisconsin. Pine Hills is a private club. The city provides choice facilities for the public at the municipal golf course. Here, too, one will find golfers from all parts of the nation, vacationers who come to the area to enjoy Wisconsin sports and recreation as the playground of America. Another reason for Sheboygan's fast rates and reputation as the convention city of the state. Tennis courts are also provided by the city in the park and recreational system, as well as numerous other facilities and activities. But in Wisconsin, one doesn't golf or play tennis, go sailing or swimming all year. 
One of the big indoor sports in the winter months is bowling, provided in the city's recreational centers. We would now like to say a few well-chosen words on the subject of bratwurst. Bratwurst Day to Sheboygan is similar to Bastille Day in France or Guy Fawkes Day in England. Sheboygan is the bratwurst capital of the world, and every summer one day is set aside to pay homage to this delectable pork sausage. The JCs run the show on this midsummer holiday, and all of Sheboygan turns out for it. And the cooks at the grills for this big public event are the top brass of government, of industry, of the civic set. They are also among the biggest consumers of this delicacy, including the mayor, the aldermen, the superintendents, and directors of the city. Another holdover from the Teutonic origins of Sheboygan citizenry, and the love of the good life, of good food and drink. While the custom may come naturally with the Schmitz, the Wagners, and the Schumanns, it has been happily adopted and perpetuated by the O'Reillys, the Levies, and the Pavelics of latter-day Sheboygan. Nobody knows for sure just who it was that invented Brockwurst in Sheboygan. And nobody cares much, so long as they can hold parades because of it, celebrate a holiday, and most particularly, eat it all year round. Well, it really doesn't matter much. But for the people of Sheboygan, the Bratwurst custom has come to symbolize the good things of the city, including comradeship and good neighborliness, as well as prosperity and advantages for the future of Sheboygan's children. So much for the Gemutlichkeit of Sheboygan. Our fine homes and schools, our parks and buildings, our material well-being, all of which means nothing to any community without the spiritual balance of religious life. For surely if Sheboygan can be called the city of homes, the city of elms, the city of wide street, the worship and 48 churches of all denominations, including the Protestant, the Catholic, and the Jewish faiths. A few years ago when the city celebrated its 100th anniversary, the observation was inaugurated by a stirring demonstration of faith attended by almost 30,000 people in Ballrath Bowl of all faiths. In the words of one of the presiding clergymen at this rally, May the celebration of a century of service for God and country be an inspiration to all of us to labor with renewal by usher in another century of even greater progress for the honor and glory of God, our country, and the salvation of souls. This, then, is our story of the city. A good place to live, to work, to build our homes, to raise our children, and to worship God, each in his own way, in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, USA.